welcome to City Skylines The Dev Diaries. These videos are based on the official Dev Diaries that can be found at the Paradox Interactive Forums and I'll include a link to them in the video description. In this episode we'll be looking at public transport. The developers at Colossal Order have been quick to remind us that City Skylines is a city builder rather than a transport simulator. But these are the same developers that gave us Cities in Motion so my expectations for transport are through the roof. Let's take a look. There are five transport options in City Skylines. Buses, Metro, Trains, Ships and Planes. And I'm giving Paradox and Colossal Order a big thumbs up straight away for giving us all the basic options on day one and not succumbing to the temptation to hold back on, say, the Metro for a quick buck DLC a month or two after release. Having said that, if the game turns out to be as good as it looks, I'm going to be the first in the queue for a monorail DLC. Well, unless the modders beat them to it. Okay, enough of that. Let's look at the five transport options in detail, starting with the buses. Buses will probably be your first option for public transport due to the relatively low cost. You need two things to make your buses work. A bus depot and bus stops. As you place bus stops, you'll see the route that the buses will follow. Now in the real world, buses need two main things to make them function sensibly. Routes, okay, check, and timetables, which determine the frequency of the buses. In City Skylines, you can adjust the budget to either increase or decrease the number of buses on your bus routes, thereby increasing or decreasing the frequency. Now, a quick word to my good friends at SimCity developer Maxis. See? How freaking hard was that? Okay, moving on. You can run your entire bus network from a single depot, or you can distribute your depots and create local services for individual neighbourhoods. Buses do pretty much everything you'd want buses to do in a city simulation. Although I should point out that buses only operate within your city limits and they don't have connections to the outside world. Either way, I'm going to be spending a lot of time playing with these. Now if you want to move a lot of people fast and efficient, you're going to want a metro system. But make sure you can afford it because they're not cheap to build. Metros also require two structures in order to function. The metro station, and I'm desperately trying to ignore the fact that it's almost the same size as a farm, and tracks which are built in a special view mode where the tracks and stations are highlighted. This mode also highlights any other transport buildings and tracks and routes which makes planning your super duper integrated transport network a total breeze. Once again though, metros don't have connections to the outside world. So let's take a look at the transport options that do. Starting with everyone's favourite, trains. Trains are divided into passenger and cargo trains and both have unique terminals that you can build. Now this is where it gets interesting. You can use the train network in two different ways. First, if you only build terminals and connect the train tracks to the outside connecting train tracks, which you'll find on the map, the terminals will only service intercity traffic importing and exporting cargo and passengers, which, by the way, includes tourists. Second, you can create train routes to service your local needs just within the city limits. Trains are cheaper to build than underground metros, but of course they take up space, and they have to coexist with your road network, no doubt leading to lots of complex road and rail bridge work. I love it! Now, City Skylines does feature elevated train tracks, but I haven't seen any L train stations as yet, and I'd certainly love to have that option. Your second intercity option is harbours. Harbours also have separate buildings for passengers and cargo. 
and both have access to outside world connections. Ships have got huge capacity in this game and harbours can play a major role in an integrated transport network, transporting very large amounts of people and goods. One little comment to the developers though, can you please tone down the ship animation? These are big ships. They shouldn't bob up and down like a cork in a washing machine. Oh, oh, and please leave in the ability for ships to climb over dams because that's just too damn funny. Finally, airports. Airports service mostly passengers and it's the most expensive of the public transport options. If you want to bring in large numbers of tourists, airports are the way to go and they can really boost your economy. But while the airport increases your tourism, it also increases your noise pollution. So you want to keep it well away from any residential zones. Looking at the airport though does make me want to give the developers one piece of advice. Guys, you need to sit down right now and have a talk about the relative scale of buildings. It's the one consistent issue that I have and that I've seen across the forums. It may be too late to do anything about it before launch, but please be sure that you've exhausted all the options, because even if farms can't be made bigger because of the limitations on zoning, there's really no excuse for not having a really huge, impressive airport with multiple buildings, big parking lots, and definitely two intersecting runways. Listen to the fans, we want our airports big! You have an awesome game here. Be all you can be. Overall, I love what I've seen of the transport so far. It looks nice and simple to use, but with enough depth to adequately simulate a real-world transport system. Okay, that's it for public transport. Once again, I'd like to thank Henker for putting together the original Dev Diary. I'd like to thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this vid, hit the like button, or better still, leave me a comment. I'll see you for episode 5, where we'll be looking closer at Outside Connections.